Tonight, APC already preparing for rerun, says Labour Party. And stakeholders are calling for a change in NIS policy on passport issuance for minors. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The national chairman of the Labour Party, Mr. Julius Abure, has urged uh, members of the party to be elect following uh, the information available to him that the All Progressive Congress APC was already preparing for a possible rerun of the 2023 presidential elections. This, he explained, was because the ruling party was aware of the tide that was heavily tilted against them in the ongoing legal challenge of the presidential election results as declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Acting National Publicity Secretary of the party, Obiora Ifo, in a statement quoted Abure as calling on the over 10 million members of the party to be on the alert and get ready for further humiliation of the APC and its government in the polls if the sinister plot fails to materialise. Well, joining us tonight to discuss this is Professor Richard Wokocha. He is a professor of law at the River State University in Port Hatha. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Good evening. Good evening, and good evening, Nigerians. Great. Uh, let's start by looking at this situation. The tribunal still sits as we speak. There's not been any conclusion whatsoever, um, and we're yet to hear anything on that issue. Uh, why would you think the, the, the Labour Party would take this position quite early in the day? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, Professor. Okay, yes. Um, <laughs> the tribunal is still sitting, and um, I, I think this is regular. It's uh, normal. Uh, in a context, parties expect one of two judgments, either a successful one if you are the claimant or um, one that is not successful. And so um, I think it's normal uh, for the gentleman to uh, make the statement he has made, um, uh, mm -hmm. To assure party members that uh, uh, they are still on course and there is every possibility. He says he hears from the rumor mill. So I'm sure that's not something uh, that we can give much uh, attention as far as uh, the, the substance of what he's talking about is concerned. But whether or not he talks about it, I think it is normal for all contestants uh, at the tribunal to prepare or to hope for preparation for a rerun, since that is a possibility from the outcome of the election, uh, of the mm. petition. Uh, yeah. it, it, a lot of people who have reacted to this, of course, you know that um, just before the presidential elections, many would say that the Labour Party was a tsunami of sorts because it had the support of many young people and several others who were tired of the Buhari administration and the likes. Um, but many are saying, um, as opposed to the Labour Party members and the followers, so many people are calling this matter subjudice. Is it something that we can count as subjudice being that this case is still in court? Uh, discussing um, how a matter should end, why the matter is in court, is clearly delving into the realm of the court and prejudging the court. Uh, okay. So that would be um, de dealing with something that is subjudice. Uh, but discussing the possibilities of... Uh, of uh, outcomes and uh, possible preparations for uh, what follows those outcomes. I think it's something a citizen can do without running foul of the law. Um, so uh, at this point, we cannot talk of um, um, what we believe will be the judgment of the court from our evaluation of the facts that are before the court. That is the business of the court to do. But yes, we can safely talk of whether parties should prepare in the event. I mean, there are just two possibilities alone, either a successful contestation or an unsuccessful one. So we will not be telling the court what to do if we say, oh, parties should prepare or are preparing uh, for possible outcome of that contestation. So I think that will be all right. Uh, but we cannot say that uh, we have evaluated the facts and this is where the, uh, the judgment of the court is going. That would be... Um, acting on a matter that is subjudice. Again, let's look at um, some of the messaging in the, the, the 
press release that was put out by um, Mr. Bure of the um, Labour Party. He talked about the fact that the, the tide is heavily tilted against the APC uh, in the ongoing challenge of the presidential elections results as declared by INEC. Um, and he also went on to say that, um, you know, um, over 10 million members of the party need to be on alert and get ready to further humiliate the APC and its government um, in the polls if their sinister plot fails uh, to materialize. He said, and I quote again, rumors have it that those in government are already planning to rerun uh, this election. And this is one of the supports we will be canvassing from you. I know that as the media, we should not be running on rumors. Um, but again, we live in a country where information, um, no matter how you try to get it, is you have the source for it. And sometimes we have to rely on some of these hearsays. But let's look at the matter that he's referring to um, and the possibility that maybe the uh, Tinubu administration could be talking about a rerun of this election. Um, the administration will not be doing so. Um, remember that the speaker is a party at the um, contestation that is going on before the uh, tribunal. Uh, so he is uh, at liberty to think he has done his best and to say, oh, yeah, I think uh, I have hit home running and uh, I'm expecting something good. I think those are all within his rim. Uh, but if he says this is what the court will do, that is not within his rim. Um, he can praise himself for what he has done, how well he thinks he has done. But if it is for the court, the tribunal, to determine the worth of the much he has done and to affix uh, value to it in terms of the outcome of the contest that is before that tribunal. Um, uh, throughout this, uh, this uh, contestation, you have uh, seen outright uh, and had outright statements that uh, clearly appear to prejudge the case, but this is not one I will worry myself about. Uh, one who goes into the witness box and comes out is free to say, oh, I think I have done very well. I think I demolished them and all that. I think those are things that are normal that uh, he can say. But uh, he cannot say this is what the court will do. And he hasn't said so, mind you. He said in the event mm. that their plot does yes. not work. Uh, and that is the plot of successfully defending the uh, electoral victory. So he is speaking like you and I, and is predicated on what the outcome may be, possibilities. Uh, he is not saying mm. this is what the judge... He's not saying I had... I hear that the tribunal will rule in our favor or has a prepared judgment in our favor. No, that's not what he's saying. He's evaluating the performance of his party at the tribunal and thinking that everything is possible and in the event that our expectation comes through, prepare. I think that is, uh, that is all right mm. for me. I want us to move away from this a bit. Um, let's just digress into the EU report on the election. There's a yeah. lot to unpack in that report. Um, for some reason, a lot of people are just glossing over it. But let's let's pick it in bits. Um, most importantly, the EU report is talking about um, the the conduct of the elections from INEC perspective, um, the promises that were made by INEC and what they were able to deliver, the uploading of the results. The fact that it took so long for these results to be announced and when it was announced, they also clearly talked about the fact that there was misinformation and disinformation. It clearly states names, times, events uh, um, of members of the APC misinforming members of the public against the opposition um, using the powers of the incumbent. Um, let's look at that report from the INEC and the sitting um, government first and foremost, and then we'll talk about security agencies and, of course, yeah. um, the media. Um, what do you overall think of the position of the EU report as opposed to um, the ECOWAS, uh, the African Observatory team? Um, the first is that um, as an observer, you are expected to report what you experienced, what you saw, and um, Practically what you experience, that's the key thing you're supposed to report. Uh, um, you may also report what you had, but you will have to specify uh, with a caveat that this is what you had and not what you saw and experienced. So um, you can't fault any observer with respect to what he says I saw and I did, or uh, what I saw and I experienced. Uh, so to that extent, uh, you can hardly put it with you. You will also agree that 
Um, some of these issues have also been um, uh, in the media in Nigeria. Uh, they've been talked about uh, the issue of uh, expectations and uh, what eventually turned out uh, and all that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, these are also, I believe, uh, a lot of the things that have been presented before the court on which the court is to make pronunciation uh, or pronouncements on um, what they amount to and the value to be attached to them with respect to their effect on the election. So I think um, uh, mm. if you have conflicting reports, we can address, say, maybe each man reported what he experienced, where he was, and from the point from which he was looking at it. Uh, but I, I won't be surprised. Uh, but again, you will note that this is almost consistent with our, all our elections. Uh, the reports from uh, the external sector, uh, the uh, bodies coming especially from outside our region, uh, mm -hmm. have been more critical and uh, have always faulted nearly all our elections. They have always raised uh, mm -hmm. those issues that they have observed. Let, let's let's zero in on um, the issue of disinformation and misinformation. Again, we've seen a pushback from the federal government, the Sinigo administration, calling it a. Um, a I'm, I might not be able to put it directly, but a, a biased desk job um, from the EU. But critically, looking at what happened on that day, I mean, um, let's even start by talking about um, the issue of. Fanny Kayade and the Minister of State, um, um, Professor Skeyamu, and all of the unfounded allegations that were made. Yes, in the case of FFK, he was um, um, invited by the um, DSS, if I remember yes, clearly. Yes. But then for the sitting minister, nothing was done. In fact, he went on to have press conferences and pushing, um, you know, for an arrest of the PDP presidential candidate. Um, and this is something that does not necessarily look good for us as a country. As you have said, the EU has continually um, faulted our electoral processes. Um, so why, can't, why, why haven't we been able to, you know, take a lead of sorts or borrow a leaf from all of the recommendations they've made in, from our previous elections in terms of these kinds of issues, disinformation and misinformation? Well, on the issue of disinformation and misinformation, um, if I were to hold um, a particular ground with respect to information affecting the election, I would say that is one area I did not quite see uh, on a serious note, especially from the part of the government uh, at that time, um, misinforming or disinforming citizens in a manner that will affect the outcome of the election. Um, making comments on what a person said and what a person did, and drawing conclusions on what you think is the legal value of those things and calling for investigation on those things, for me, uh, mm -hmm. would not be the kind of misinformation and disinformation of uh, um, electoral character that I will find disturbing or as affecting um, uh, the election. Uh, this is one election, really, in which there was a lot of misinformation, a lot of libelous and uh, defamatory information about parties. But, but I would think there was more against the party that eventually won the election than the other party with respect to things that were published consistently uh, that at the end of the day, you cannot say with certainty uh, we are true or found to be true. Nevertheless, they were assiduously pursued. So I, I would be surprised if the issue of misinformation and the disinformation uh, will be said to be coming from the end from which the report is saying it came from. Because there was much more at the other side. This is one of the most divisive election campaigns we have had in our history. And I do not think it's in the direction that the report is uh, talking about. So um, I think I, I would not agree with them completely uh, on that issue of misinformation and disinformation. Um, I, I was expecting, if they are talking of misinformation and disinformation, they are, they are talking of uh, policy issues and uh, and the information relating to uh, policy and the conduct of the election that were deliberately false and that affected could have affected the outcome of the election. Uh, but if it is the one that we are talking about now, it would appear to me, going by what transpired at that time as a person who was in this country, that there was more on the other part than on the part uh, 
that the report is leaning on in terms of the weight of uh, of uh, misinformation and disinformation. It's still plus politics. Apologies for that break. Um, we're still talking with Professor Richard Aduche Wakata. Now, Professor Wakata, you were, we're trying to talk about information and uh, misinformation and disinformation. Let's move away quickly from that and talk about. Um, some of the issues connected to the media in that report clearly i looked at it very closely today it talked about the fact that the 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 nbc um used the power of the state to muscle the media it made reference to the fact uh, that a media house or media houses were fined um, for certain statements that were made it also talked it made a recommendation saying that um the government of the day should not, in fact, the executive should not have a hand in picking who heads, um, you know, the NBC, being that it should be an independent, um, you know, um, commission that oversees, you know, the media, the running of the media in Nigeria. As and as a let's let's use for example, Ofcom in the United Kingdom. This is an independent body that oversees all media houses in the UK, whether it be the BBC that is state owned. Or every other, you know, media house. Uh, do you share the opinion of the EU on this particular matter? I think overregulation is always bad uh, for public interest, especially in matters of this nature. Uh, while it is true that we are a country that uh, is um, has been unnecessarily and wrongly sensitive, in the in the sense that. Um, uh, things that are not issues elsewhere can trigger all manner of uh, criminal activities here, including killing of persons and uh, citizens and all that. That will make you understand that we need some level of regulation, yes. But overregulation is not good uh, for anybody. It's not good for the media. It's not good for the society. Uh, when we overregulate, there is a tendency to politicize the over uh, regulatory powers. Uh, and that that can have adverse effect on um, on what is an issue, and that is the integrity of of the process that we are the public process we are talking about. So I agree that it will make sense if you can take it away from the hand of a participant in the election. Um, if you can make the sector completely independent, it will be beautiful. Uh, remember always that there is always a price to pay for wrong publication. There is already some level of mitigation that has been introduced by the law that if you malign somebody, mm -hmm. you prepare to face a libel suit or some kind of defamati uh, defamation suit. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, if you uh, you say something that is contrary to the law of the state, uh, you prepare to face the necessary um, criminal consequences of what you have done. So I believe that Media houses are capable of regulating themselves. But again, we are in an age in which, beside the um, traditional media, you have all manner of media that have unrestrained access to the public and are creating impacts that are both positive and negative. Um, so yeah. it, it, it's a two-way thing. Given the peculiarity of your country, what works in England may not work beautifully for you. Um, many devourers can be killed just at the shout of blasphemy in your country, and there will be no consequence. Mm. And so you will need mm. some level of um, state intervention that may not be necessary in England, where people are more civilized and uh, mm. activities are different. So it's a, it's a two-way thing. Uh, there is need, because of your peculiarity, to make some level of intervention on the part of public authority. Uh, but on the whole, in an ideal situation, an independent regulatory body is always better for society. Hmm. So I will agree um, with them on that. Quickly, before I go to um, the EU report in its entirety and why it's being heralded much more than other observatory reports that were put out here in Nigeria, let's talk about um, the, the, the part of the report that looked at how um, voters were molested right in the view of security agents. Um, and, and and the recommendations that they've also made uh, as it concerns the police and, and this violence that ensued. Many of these um, observers said that um, several states had um, violence and um, media, journalists were also being um, vi violated, abused, um, beaten and battered, um, including Lagos State. 
uh, which one would expect not to have that, but we, of course, um, recorded several incidences. And they also talked about the, the role of security agencies in the election. I want to ask, because for me, I feel like this is a deja vu feeling. Every single election cycle, before, during, and after, we seem to be having these same kinds of conversation. And, and I want to ask, uh, it's a rhetorical question. If we keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting for a different result, are we not crazy? Yeah, that's the definition. That's a, 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 uh, it's not modern. It's always been the definition of, of madness. Uh, when you do one thing over and over and you expect something different. I, I think the security agencies, um, uh, in my opinion, uh, performed less than uh, expected. But you see, in our peculiarity again, the problem is not even limited to the security agencies. Look at the way state actors acted. Look at the way governors acted in their various states. Look at the way they deliberately and against the law restrained other parties from being able to do what the constitution says they should do. Because election is not a business. It's not a private affair. It's not a commercial activity. It's a constitutional public activity in which all participants must try to sell the idea to the public, the electorate, on why they are a correct choice for the electorate to make. And you can't say people should pay before they can speak to the public or because of where they want to stay to speak to the public. INEC is to determine that. The law makes um, the National Assembly the appropriate authority to make law and regulation of elections. And that law is made in the Electoral Act. INEC is given the power, and INEC made these regulations. No state ought to have made those other regulations and those other orders and uh, directives that they were given, restraining other parties from being able to participate um, uh, freely in selling their ideas to the electorate. A lot of things went wrong. I think something was wrong with the way we coordinated, coordinated security. They slept where they should have been active, and people acted with impunity and did not give a damn. They did not hide their faces. Sometimes it was on national television, and they acted against the law, and there was no consequence. The natural expectation uh, when you have that kind of situation is that everybody will either go mad, and the election will become much more nasty in subsequent times, or something mm. we definitely give. So I think uh, that problem manifested in a whole lot of areas. Mm. And the ones that were of greater concern to me was the one by public authorities that were acting in direct violation of the law. Mm. Finally, Professor, because we have just a minute to go. Um, okay. I'm, most, I'm most bothered, not necessarily worried, but bothered as to why we heralded the EU report. And I'm not in any way... Um, saying that this is not authentic or querying it. I'm just saying we have the CDD, the Center for Democracy here. We have Yaga Africa. We have Enough is Enough. There were reports that were released, but we did not necessarily herald those reports in the way that we've uplifted and made this news. You and I, in fact, are discussing this on national television. Why do yes. we seem to you know, uphold this other, um, as opposed to the other reports that we had from in-house? Well, it's something coming from the international community and uh, something of greater magnitude in the international community. So, so its area of coverage and its uh, evaluation uh, will be much wider than that of the others. Uh, uh, naturally, when something like that comes, those in whose favor it is will hold it up. Oh, look at it. We have said it. That is what we said. And those against whom it is will definitely come up with answers and reasons why it should not be taken seriously. So I think it's a natural expectation, especially uh, in the third world where we attach greater importance to what is coming from outside than what is coming from the inside. Mm. Well, Professor Richard Wokocha is a professor of law at the River State University in Port Harcourt. We want to thank you very much for being part of the conversation. And we're hoping that some of these recommendations will be looked into other than just discarded. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Okay, great. Now, if you are a mother and you have been trying recently to get a passport for your child to go out of the country and you found it difficult to do, well, we will be having a conversation as to why the NIS must change its policy on passport issuance for minors. Stay with us. We'll be right back.